1935, Langston Hughes penned the poem, Let America Be America Again. In it, he calls on America to live up to its promise of freedom and opportunity for all. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme, that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Oh, let America be America again, the land that has never been yet and yet must be the land where every man is free. Hughes painfully expresses the gap between the American dream and all those who've been denied its promise, those for whom America has never been America. What's most striking to me in his poem is the optimism and his belief in America's potential despite all evidence to the contrary. He could have justifiably cursed this nation that enslaved African-Americans for 250 years and legalized racism through discriminatory Jim Crow laws. But instead of giving up on this country's ideals, Hughes challenges us and all of his readers to make America live up to its highest aspirations, equality and dignity for all. In this week's double Parsha, Chukat Balak, we'll read about Balak, a Moabite king who feels threatened by the Israelite army and hires Bilam, a non-Israelite prophet, to curse the Israelites. But instead of allowing Bilam to curse them, God fills Bilam's mouth with poetic words of praise. Rabbi Yochanan, a second century sage in Israel, taught that God radically transformed Bilam's planned curses into blessings, while Bilam intended to say, that the Israelites should never have synagogues and study halls. Instead, he said, Matovu o halecha Yaakov, how good are your tents, O Jacob? A phrase the Talmud in Sanhedrin understands as a reference to our houses of worship and study. Similarly, Bilam wished to say that the Shekhinah, the divine presence, would not rest upon the Israelites. But instead, he said, Mishkanotecha Yisrael, your dwelling places, O Israel, implying that the Shekhinah, related to the word Mishkanotecha, would indeed dwell with Israel. Bilam wanted to prophesy that the kingdom of Israel would not endure, but instead he said it would be like the winding brooks which flow continuously. He wanted to say that the Israelites would have no olive trees and vineyards, but instead he promised that they would be like gardens by the riverside. And finally, Bilam intended to say that the fragrance of Israel would not diffuse from their fulfillment of mitzvot, but said instead, like aloes that the Lord has planted. With each intended curse, a blessing emerged instead. The story of Bilam carries a powerful lesson for us. Here we have a man who looks upon the nation of Israel with anger and wishes to condemn it forever. Yet God transforms his destructive words into words of bounty and blessing. We too sometimes look at our own country with anger and despair. And the more we learn of American history, the more we're overwhelmed by the racism and bigotry that have defined our national story. Not just populist movements like the Ku Klux Klan, but the 20th century eugenics movement led by prominent scholars and political figures, the legal devices that were used to enforce racial segregation, the inequities in our criminal justice system, and the stark disparities that continue to exist in household wealth, health care, education, housing, and employment. America the beautiful. The American story may fill us with deep shame and even with revulsion at times, but the Bilam story teaches that curses can be turned into blessings. Anger can be transformed into positive energy, a force for goodness and healing. Our own honest look at our history our own reckoning with the past shows us not just our country's profound failings, but its achievements, its resilience, 
and its beautiful ideals. Let us see our national failings as blessings waiting to unfold. On this Shabbat of Independence Day, there's still much to celebrate. Let's be grateful for the freedoms and opportunities we enjoy, even as we are intensely mindful of those who do not participate fully in those blessings. Let us resolve to extend the promise of America to those who have so far been denied. Let us cherish the privilege of independence and do all we can to strengthen our precious democracy by standing up for what we believe in and participating fully in the democratic process. And let us believe, as Langston Hughes believed, that America can still be America. On this 244th Independence Day, we recommit to the inspiring vision enshrined in our Pledge of Allegiance, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Let us work together to build the land that has never been yet and yet must be. Shabbat Shalom.